and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is on his second state visit to India. This visit follows the highly successful 2019 visit of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Saudi Arabia, during which the two countries established the Strategic Partnership Council. Here's all you need to know about the India-Saudi ties and the rapidly evolving global geopolitical at this moment. Now in New Delhi, the Crown Prince received a ceremonial reception and will meet and rather met India's President Draupadi Murmu. Mohammed bin Salman and Narendra Modi are focusing on political, security, defense, economic, cultural and people-to-people -people ties. Prime Minister Modi and MBS are also co-chairing the first leaders meeting of the Strategic Partnership Council. Now, India and Saudi Arabia have historically close and friendly relations with extensive people-to-people -people contacts. The trade between both the countries reached an all-time high of $52.75 billion in the financial year 2022 and 2023. Now, both the countries also have a strong partnership in the area of energy. There is a vibrant Indian community of around 2.4 million in Saudi Arabia. Well, the United States, Saudi Arabia, the European Union, the United Arab Emirates and others, they launched a major trade plan on the sidelines of the Group of 20 Summit in New Delhi. It marks an ambitious attempt to create a modern-day spice route linking Europe, the West Asia and India, further boosting trade ties with potentially wide-ranging geopolitical implications. The Economic Corridor is an initiative to link railways, sports, electricity and data networks and also hydrogen pipelines. One proposed project would also link railway and port facilities across West Asia, including the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Jordan and Israel, potentially speeding trade between India and Europe by up to 40%. Not only this, a shipping container that today travels from Mumbai through the Suez Canal to Europe could in the future go by rail from Dubai to Haifa in Israel and then on to Europe, saving both money and time. Now, Biden's administration is actively also pruding Riyadh, a major oil producer and security partner, to normalize ties with Israel, that is, after decades of conflict and closed borders. Saudi Arabia has never officially recognized Israel. Now, all the projects could also help oil-soaked West Asian states wean their economies of dependence on fossil fuels. Importantly, the plan could be a significant response to China's so-called Belt and Road Initiative. The project spread Chinese influence, investments and commerce across Europe, Africa, Asia and Latin America. Saudi Arabia is betting big on India's potential as well. Let's tell you more on this. Now, India, <coughs> India boasts of a vast market of 1.4 billion people. During his visit to India in February 2019, Saudi Crown Prince had announced that the kingdom would be investing $100 billion in India. Nine sectors are in focus, which are number one, energy, refining, petrochemicals, infrastructure, agriculture, minerals and mining, manufacturing, education and lastly, health. New Delhi also signed an MOU with the Saudi Ministry of Energy, Industry and Mineral Resources in 2019 in a bid to invest in India's National Investment and Infrastructure Fund Limited. Subsequent to the framework agreement signed between Invest India and Saudi Arabian General Investment Authority in 2019, the Invest India team has also visited the kingdom multiple times. Meanwhile, the oil prices gained almost 1% to a nine-month high on Friday on the rising U.S. diesel futures and also worries about tight oil supplies. Remember, Saudi Arabia and Russia recently extended supply cuts. Last but not the least, Riyadh is going all out to move away from oil profits. The Vision 2030 plan includes Aramco shares a sale focus on sovereign wealth fund, a new visa system and economic diversification. The country is also eyeing enhanced participation of women in the workforce as well. Oil has made Saudi Arabia a major economic force, but it comes at a cost. The short-term problem is the volatile price of crude oil. Oil will not lose its dominance of the market for transport fuel in the next few years. But further ahead, the outlook is unknown. And therefore, Saudi Arabia needs to become less dependent on oil for government revenue and for the jobs and incomes of Saudi nationals.
And come on this, so we have with us Ambassador Anil Trigunyath. Uh, he also served as Director General, Joint Secretary for the Gulf and Hajj Divisions in the Ministry of External Affairs, New Delhi. And he's joining us live from Riyadh. Thank you so much for joining us and beyond, Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Ambassador, the Saudi Crown Prince has especially stayed back in India after attending the successful G20 summit. How do you assess Saudi Arabia and India ties going forward? Well, I think that uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, in the last few years, our relationship uh, has gone uh, from transactional to truly strategic. Uh, it has expanded in every fora, in every uh, area which is possible because uh, Crown Prince has a vision 2030, which is modernizing Saudi Arabia completely from economy to social dimensions uh, to day-to-day uh, -day living nearly and that is quite visible while you are visiting saudi arabia there is a greater uh, reliance now on the uh, non-fossil fuels there is an effort to become the largest hydrogen hub uh, in the area and the one of the biggest things is that uh, apart from economy energy and expatriates that form the bedrock of our relationships with these countries it has become into the defense into security and cyber and new areas of cooperation including artificial intelligence space and others and so i think that the relationship has expanded deepened and this is the second visit to, of crown prince mohammed bin salman who became the prime minister about a year ago uh, and uh, this uh, our prime minister has also visited there twice and i and remember i was part of the uh, delegation which came here in 2010 to since when we signed the riyadh declaration and ever since the relationship has really moved forward uh, especially i would say there is a great realization in uh, uh, this has become i would say a, a a relationship where pakistan used to be a factor which is no longer a factor so that is something very important uh, to understand as far as this relationship is concerned. Also, in the case of, um, you know, expatriating the economic and the other offenders, mm -hmm. we have never had it so good. They are very quick. Uh, they are looking after the population, which happens to be here 2.5 million people, and they are pretty happy. So things are really looking good. And the most important thing that we have seen in the in just during this G20 visit, mm -hmm. not only that India and Saudi Arabia cooperated, but the most important thing was this, as you mentioned, uh, the declaration of the new co corridor, which we call it IMAC corridor. Now, that would be something which is a game changer and which is a very bold and trans transformative project for an alternate uh, supply line. Right, Ambassador, just coming to that, uh, the, the significance of the launch of the economic corridor that links uh, India, the Middle East and Europe. But let's also talk about how Saudi Arabia in today's time is betting big on India's potential. Shed some light on that. Well, as you know that uh, during his visit uh, in 2019, uh, MBS had actually committed to investing about $100 billion uh, in Indian infrastructure. They have become part of our strategic reserves. They realize that the India is the fastest growing uh, largest economy and it is the fifth and is going to be the third largest economy. They themselves want to become the top 10 uh, in a few years time. And so therefore there are a lot of synergies. India is the biggest market. Saudi Arabia in recent times had also adopted a policy which is called its act East policy in which its major markets like China, India, Japan, South Korea are the major focus for them. And so our Act West policy and their Act East policy link rather well, uh, in my view, uh, because there are a lot of uh, synergies and a lot of uh, issues that can be taken up jointly for the betterment of the region. And as you know, the West Asia is our, one of the most important, or I would say the critically most important region for us. Because of our dependence on energy security, we have possibility of working in the food security dimension. And now, uh, since May this year, we had some kind of informal organization called the IUSU, right. India, USA, Saudi Arabia, and UAE. I mean, and that, in my view, has a lot many projects under its belt, uh, apart from the one that has already been announced. Uh, and there, it will take us much ahead. And Saudi Arabia knows that there are returns to be made. And that is why, even during the pandemic, whether it is Alliance um, or the refinery or uh, projects in various other companies in India, investments in India, uh, they have gone on, actually. So that is something very good. And during this visit, uh, the Prime Minister and Crown Prince will be going through this, uh, you know, co-chairing this strategic partnership council. Because you can imagine that when you set up a cons council or an organization like that, which has two components and the eight working groups, and then you are at the highest level, yeah. really monitoring the progress of the various projects that have been committed. By right, Ambassador. 
some technical issues out there. But uh, thank you so much, Ambassador, for joining us on Beyond and sharing your insights with us.